Hello everybody, my name is Eric Royer, and in this CNC Tips video, I'm gonna show you how to take the pain out of making multiple copies of the same part within the same job using Vetrix Merge Toolpath and Array Copy Toolpath tools. Okay, if you're like me, every once in a while, you're gonna have a job that you're gonna to have to run that's gonna need multiple copies of the same part within the same sheet of material. Now this particular part, I have 45 copies here, five columns and, and uh, nine rows of uh, the same identical part. Now I had a customer call me the other day with a project very similar to this, and he was uh, trying to explain to me how he was doing it. And I was, I, I didn't even, I guess I hadn't even thought because I knew that there were shorter ways to do it. It made me realize that not a lot of people possibly know about this. So uh, I told him that I would make a quick tips video and then hopefully uh, I'll share it and everybody will get some, uh, some assistance out of it. So what he was doing was, let's go back over to here. Uh, so what he did was he took the single part and then he would go ahead and copy it and paste it. So we basically go copy and then paste and then he would move this over and then copy these two, et cetera, and then kind of space them all out till you had 45. Now that's, that's definitely really time consuming and uh, would not be my recommended way to do it. So what I was explaining was that you could simply copy all of your vectors, go over here to array copy, and then just simply tell it you want nine rows of five columns and you want a gap in between each of the parts that's a half an inch in all directions and click copy. Now all of a sudden you have 45 copies evenly spaced on your, uh, on your project. So I explained to him how to do that and then everything was fine. And about 15 minutes later, he was telling me, well, thanks a lot for showing me that. That's great. It saved a lot of time with regards to copy and pasting, but is, there's got to be a better way to do the tool pass. And I said, well, what are you talking about? And so this particular job has uh, three different tool paths. You've got the five small holes. You've got this large circle that's going to be a pocket. And then you have the perimeter cut out. So there's five different tool paths. So what he was doing was holding the shift key down, selecting all of the small holes like this and so on and so forth. And then he would he would run, calculate that tool path and he would come back and he would do the next one and he would hold the shift key and select all the large circles, all 45 of them, and then calculate that tool path. And then finally doing the cutout, same way, he would uh, select all 45 of those and then calculate that. So, while that that did will work, okay, it, it will do the job without a problem. Uh, Vetric has a feature called Array Copy Toolpath here, and so one thing that you can do here is you could take the original part. I'm going to go ahead and pin my toolpath. So I have the original part here, and I've created my three toolpaths for that one part. Okay, so I've got the five holes, I've got the uh, pocket for the center circle, and then the perimeter cut. Okay, so there's my part, and there's my three tool paths. Now, I've only drawn the part once here, and I, I put it in here, and I did one set of tool paths. Okay, so all that needs to be done now is come over here to Array Copy Tool Path, and here I'm going to tell it, it's going to say no visible tool pass. So I'm going to select the tool pass that I want in this array. And I'm going to tell it I want nine rows, five columns. So there's my 45. And I want a gap in between each one of a half inch. So I'm doing the same thing as I did on the array copy here, except now not only am I copying the part, but I'm also copying the tool pass to go along with it. So when I go ahead and I click calculate, you can see now I have one copy that I drew, but I have 45 copies of the toolpath. So when I go ahead and I preview this now, I'm gonna preview the array toolpath. So the array toolpath now contains these three. So if I, I preview that, you can see now I have all 45 copies done. And if I delete the waste material, there's all of my copies of this particular part. And all I had to do was draw it once and do one set of tool paths. So I showed my customer how to do it 
with the array copy toolpath. And he had said, well, geez, I already spent all this time selecting all of the features on here. And I already did the tool pass for it. So now I, I, I have everything uh, that I, I did manually. So I held the shift key. I selected everything. I created the tool pass just like this. So he could use the array copy tool path for the next job. But for this particular job, he just wanted to go ahead and run it. So here's the issue that you run into uh, when you're doing this. Vetric runs each toolpath in order from top to bottom. So when you're running this job on your machine, the first thing it's going to do is run the small holes. So it's going to put small holes in for every part. Then it's going to go ahead and do all the large circles. And it's going to do that for every part. And then finally, it's going to cut out all the parts. Now, this may be OK for you. And you may not mind that it's doing that. It's a lot of unnecessary movement of the gantry because you're going to go and do all 45 parts with the holes. And you're going to come back here and you're going to do all the circles. And you come back here and you're going to do all the perimeter cuts. It, it's not super efficient. But the other uh, reason that I, I get concerned about it is suppose this is a very expensive piece of material say this is sign foam or something where you know it's a 150 200 for a sheet of material so you're cutting this and you go ahead and you do all of the whole tool pass and then you you look and then it's doing all the the big circles and then all the perimeters and when the final perimeter is done you look at the part and you realize there was a mistake there was something wrong with it now you just cut all 45 out of this material to see one complete part, okay? And say you caught it, okay? Let, let's just look at it this way. So say I, I go ahead and I'm gonna reset the preview. I do my small holes, then I go back and I do the large circles. And then when I go do the cutout, let's, let's just say that I, I go ahead and <clears throat> I, I'm cutting out the first part here, and then it moves over to the second part and just now I stop it because I realize there's this part here, something's wrong with it. Maybe the size is off, uh, the finish isn't right. Maybe I, I forgot to do something in there. Okay, so I caught this here, but it didn't really do me any good because I still wasted the entire piece of material. Now, if I could just adjust that one tool path, all right, then the most I did was, was I would lose these two parts here. But if it was something major, like say when I took this part out, I went and I put it on top of something that it's supposed to be connected with, and I realized the holes were in the wrong spot by a slight amount. Well, at that point, I've, I've wasted the entire sheet because I've already put all the holes in, okay? So there is a, a, a solution that I like to use when I'm doing something like this, and I'm gonna show you. It's called uh, merged, Create Merge Toolpaths. Okay, so if we select that and we go ahead and we select each of these tool paths, it's very similar to the array copy tool path, except at this point, you have already created all of the tool paths and you've created all the copies manually. But what I wanna do now is I wanna click merge by part. So it's gonna, it's gonna make sure that we do each part individually. And then you have a, a choice of the ordering. So you can go you know, left to right. So it would go, you know, these five, then it would come back over here and do these five. Uh, you can do bottom up, which it'll go in this direction, then come back down and, and do each column. Uh, you could do it in a grid pattern. I always select shortest path. And what that's going to do is just going to calculate uh, to get these done with the least amount of rapid movements. Okay. So when I go ahead and I select merge tool path now, what, what happens at this point is it takes all three of these original tool paths and it puts it into one merge tool path. Now, if I'm, I'm going to use the animation here so we can see it, if I preview this now, I'm going to just speed that up so we don't have to be here forever. And you'll see now it did one full part. Now it goes and it does the second full part, etc. So if I was doing this right now and I did the first full part, I could go ahead and I could pause the job for a minute, grab that part, measure it, make sure everything is perfect before I let the rest of the array cut out. If I did it the other way, I would, and, and then I, I'd have to wait, first of all, until the last toolpath ran to cut out the perimeter of the part. 
And by that time, I've ruined the entire pan panel of material anyway. So this way here, if I paused it after I did the first one and the first one was wrong, I can make the correction. And yes, I'll have one wrong part, but I'll have 44 that'll be correct. And then I could just recut this one, hopefully on another piece of scrap material or something. So <clears throat> I like using the merge tool path tool. Uh, not only does it save time, but it allows me to create a complete part one at a time so I can check them for quality control as opposed to just blasting out each toolpath individually. So between the array toolpath and the merge toolpath, those are two features that I like. And obviously the array toolpath makes everything very, very quick because you can go ahead and just draw it once, create one set of toolpaths. And then when you do the array toolpath, it's going to work much like the merge toolpath. It's going to do each part individually as it goes around. Okay, so that's it. Hopefully you got something out of this tips video and you realize the next time you have to do a job that requires a lot of copies of the same part, you'll remember to use these two features to either shorten your uh, toolpath to do it one part at a time when you're cutting so you can quality control as you go along or that you'll use it to not have to design multiple copies and do tool pass on every copy. You can simply do one and then let the array copy tool path take care of making all the copies for you. If you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, please uh, hit the subscribe button with the bell notification. And the next time we publish a video, you'll be the first to know. And if you have any questions at all, please leave them in the comments below. I do check that every day and I will be sure to answer your, your questions if you have any. Until the next video, have a great week.